High reps for tone, low reps for bulk. This is the single most persistent myth in fitness. And it's a lie. It's the reason you're doing endless sets of 20, feeling the burn, but never seeing real change. It's also the reason you might be grinding out heavy, joint-taking sets of five, thinking it's the only way to get big. What if I told you the magic 6 to 12 rep hypertrophy zone is also dot dot dot? Just a suggestion. What if I told you and? What if I could prove to you with science that you can build the exact same amount of muscle with 30 reps as you can with 5 reps? The fitness industry has a massive credibility gap here. Trainers and influencers pick a side, but they fail to explain the actual mechanism of muscle growth. Today, we're not just answering the rep range question. We are ending the debate. I am going to show you the science of effective reps and why your body doesn't even have a rep counter. By the end of this video, you will understand hypertrophy on a level that 99% of people in the gym do not tend. You will never waste another workout worrying if you re-wasting reps. Welcome to FitCred. So, where did this myth come from? Why does everyone believe this? You've all seen this chart. It's in textbooks. It's on posters. 1 to 5 reps equals strength. 6 to 12 reps equals hypertrophy or muscle growth and 15 reps equals endurance. This chart is the single biggest source of confusion in fitness and while it's not entirely wrong, it's dangerously incomplete. It's led millions of people, including me for a long time, to believe that if your set isn't in that 6 to minus 12 magic zone, you are wasting your time. This created two problems. First, toning. People who were afraid of bulking, which isn't a thing, by the way, were sentenced to the 15 plus rep zone with lightweights, never getting close to failure, and never creating the signal for growth. Second, bulking. People who wanted muscle were terrified of doing more than 12 reps, thinking it would magically turn into endurance and kill their gains. The credibility gap is this. This chart tells you what happens, but not why. This is the most important part of the video. This is the FitCred solution. Your body doesn't know if you're on Rep 5 or Rep 25. It doesn't count. It only understands one thing. Effort and tension. To understand this, you need to know about Henman's size principle. Think of your muscle fibers as a team of workers. From small and weak to a few very big and strong ones. When you go to lift a weight, your brain is efficient. It only recruits just enough workers to get the job done. Let's look at case one. The heavy set, four, five reps. You pick up a heavy weight. Your brain immediately knows this is serious. So from rep one, it recruits all the workers, including the biggest, strongest fibers. All five reps are difficult and you achieve full muscle fiber recruitment. Now for case two, the light set for 30 reps. You pick up a light weight. Your brain, being efficient, only recruits the small, weak fibers. Rep 1 is easy. So is Rep 10. So is Rep 20. But as you get to Rep 25, 26 and 27, those small fibers are exhausted. They're failing. Your brain, still trying to complete the rep, panics and says, I need help. So it starts recruiting the bigger, stronger fibers to take over. By the time you're on your final grinding reps, like Bain Theocho, 29, 30, you have achieved full muscle fiber recruitment. Did you catch that? The result is the same. This is the big idea of effective reps. The real growth si reps are the last five or so reps before you hit muscular failure, regardless of how many reps it took you to get there. In Tessinko rep set, all five were effective reps in the 30 rep set. The last five were effective reps. The 25 reps before them weren't wasted. They were the fatigue cost you had to pay to access the big fibers. This isn't just my theory. This has been proven in the lab time and time again. A landmark 2017 meta-analysis by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, one of the world's leading hypertrophy researchers, looked at all the studies comparing high-load versus low-load training the conclusion, as long as sets were taken to, or very close to, muscular failure, 
muscle growth was statistically identical. Let me say that again. Lifting light weights for 25 to 35 reps built the same amount of muscle as lifting heavy weights for 8 to 12 reps. The myth is busted. The hypertrophy zone is a myth. The real hypertrophy zone is proximity to failure. So, if it all works, what do you do? Just pick random numbers? No. This is where we stop being myth followers and start being systematic lifters. A credible program doesn't pick one range. It uses all three for their unique benefits. This is the FitCred 3 Pathway Protocol. We use each range for a different purpose. First, the Strength Skill Pathway. Three to six reps. This is for your heavy compound lifts. Squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press. We use it because this is the most efficient way to build raw strength and perfect your neurological skill teach in your brain to fire all those fibers at once. You can't get this neurological stimulus from a 30 rep set. Use it for your first main lift of the day. Second, the efficient pathway. 6 to 12 reps. This is the bread and butter, dumbbell presses, rows, lunges, pull-ups. Why do we use it? This is the magic zone for one reason. It's efficient, it gives you a perfect blend of high mechanical tension and metabolic stress to burn in the least amount of time. Use it for the bulk of your accessory or secondary exercises. Third, the metabolic pathway, 15 to 30 plus reps. This is for lighter isolation work. This range is fantastic for two things. First, your joints. It's very low stress on your connective tissues. And second, your mind muscle connection it's the best way to feel the pump and isolate a specific muscle like with lateral raises bicep curls or leg extensions use it at the end of your workout as a finisher or for small sensitive joints let's go back to that original myth high reps for tone wrong tone is simply a combination of having muscle and being lean enough to see it you must build that muscle and you can do it in any rep range as long as you train with effort. Low reps for bulk. Also wrong. You can bulk, meaning build muscle, just as effectively with 30 rep sets. The massive problem we solve today isn't what rep range is best. It's rep range anxiety. The solution is training freedom. You are now free. You are free to lift heavy. You are free to lift light. You are free to get a pump. As long as you are training with effort pushing close to failure, you are not wasting reps. You are signaling growth. If this video just cleared up years of confusion for you, my only ask is that you subscribe and join the FitCred community. We don't do myths. We're those science. Now, I want to hear from you. Be honest. What has been your go-to rep range up until now? Are you a six-toot, twelve-lifer? A high rep toner or a heavy only lifter? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.